I'm Greg Grugan in Houston. I'm Stephen Dial in Dallas. And I'm Rudy Koski in Austin. And this is Texas. The issue is. As we speak here in the Lone Star State, the greenback is not our holdback. This week we talked to the top money man in Texas government, Comptroller Glenn Hager, about the mountain of excess cash lawmakers must now figure out how to spend. Hey, you're the CFO of the ninth biggest economy in the world. And I, I kind of think of you as the, the personal doctor for state government's financial condition. Give us a sense of that. You know, really the last year plus has been historical in revenues that have come into the state treasury, in part very robust sales tax, just to put in perspective, that's almost 60% of all the tax collections for the state are sales tax, so that's why that one is as more important than any of the others from the data point. But then severance tax collections, gas, oil, both of those have been very historical. And then one of the aspects that I continue to just emphasize that unfortunately all of us have paid a lot more for items that we've been purchasing now for the last 18 months than we have before with 40 year high record inflation. And so in part what that means, just to make a point, in a given month in the last two, three, four months, average Texans spend just on taxable items. That doesn't include groceries, that doesn't include uh, items for medication, because those are not sales tax, but just sales tax items. They're paying about $4.5 billion more a month than they would for the same items a year ago or for the last year, $45 billion more for those tax items and so my point being is the economy has outperformed any expectation than we could have expected here in Texas um, but also part of that is because you and I are paying more than we were just a year ago everybody who walks in this room and talks to you is waiting to hear the big number what what do you project is going to be available we have a cash carryover balance of remarkably almost 33 billion dollars this is truly a historical once in a lifetime budgeting opportunity for the legislature to put the state on a course of unassailable excellence for literally generations to come we have heard the governor say he'd like a good chunk of this surplus refunded in some form uh, and property tax relief we have also heard speaker Phelan call this a once in a lifetime opportunity to invest in badly needed infrastructure. I know part of your role is to give guidance. They can almost kind of set it aside to be able to continue to have property tax relief in two years, in four years, in six years, which is really, that's why this is a historical opportunity that that doesn't exist in prior legislative sessions. I have a couple concerns. One, making sure that we keep our eye on the ball per se, which is investing in that infrastructure, whether it's roads, water, our electrical grid, broadband, uh, internet coverage, which three million people across the state don't have it at their homes, which is an astonishing, astonishing number. And also understanding that we have to have good quality state employees, we have to have teachers, we have to have nurses, we have to have skilled trade people that can come do the basic plumbing and air conditioned work and carpentry work. So I think we can invest in some of those areas as well. I think what I just heard is that Texans paid taxes up front through inflation and our sales tax. And so this is their money. This is not the state's money. It's the taxpayer's money. Fellas, my uh, one word reaction is cushion. Stephen, what word do you offer? My word is abundance. All right, Rudy, lay it on <laughs> us. What's your word? I'm going to go negative. Pandora. <laughs> okay, stay with us. The Fox Texas Trio will be right back.